welcome. Today we're going to check the relative polarity of DC machine interpoles and the armature and correct it if necessary using a simple interpole polarity test. It's important to perform this test after any DC machine repairs or routine maintenance activities where the brush leads of the brush holders might accidentally be switched. If undetected, that will cause severe brush sparking or even flashover as the motor is loaded. Some of what we'll cover includes how to verify whether or not the interpole polarity is correct, how to diagnose and remedy interpole polarity problems, including misconnected or incorrectly sequenced interpoles, and how to check for too many or too few interpole circuits. We'll also throw in a couple of bonus tips about equalizing jumpers. To conduct the test, we'll need a true RMS voltmeter, an adjustable single phase AC power supply, such as a Variac or a test panel, and for a large machine such as this one, we might need more current capacity than a Variac has, so you may be operating off of your test panel. As always, follow your company's safety practices and procedures. Wear the proper personal protective equipment. The role of the interpoles in a DC machine is to apply an equal but opposite magnetic flux to the armature flux, which keeps the brush neutral position stable as the load and armature current changes. In other words, the polarity of the interpoles must be equal and opposite to the polarity of the armature. To check for this, we'll use the interpole polarity test. This is basically a buck boost transformer test that applies low voltage AC to the armature interpole circuit at two adjacent brush holders, and we measure the output voltage at the armature leads A1 and A2 in the terminal box. To use this test on a compound wound DC machine, we would need to disconnect the series leads S1 and S2 from the armature leads A1 and A2. If the interpole polarities are correct, they'll buck the applied voltage typically producing about one half to two thirds of the voltage at the A1, A2 as what we're putting in to adjacent brush posts. If they're incorrect, they'll actually boost the applied voltage so they'll step it up. The output voltage between A1 and A2 will be higher than the input voltage we're putting into adjacent brush posts. The output voltage from this test can also indicate some other problems with the interpoles, such as open or misconnected interpoles and connections, misconnected interpoles with too many or too few circuits, or incorrect interpole polarity sequences. In other words, instead of north, south, north, south, perhaps we have three norths and a south. Because this is an AC transformer ratio test, you can even use it to verify that the number of interpole circuits is correct. To conduct the test, we'll first connect a true RMS digital AC voltmeter to leads A1 and A2 and electrically isolate them from each other and from the motor frame for safety. Next, we'll connect our power supply leads to adjacent brush posts. In other words, one positive post and one negative, and it's often convenient to connect those directly to the brush shunts. Be sure to separate the power supply leads from each other and from the motor frame. For this test, we'll use 20 volts AC. Any low voltage AC will work. Just be consistent using the same voltage for consistent results. And the reason for that is it's going to be easier to make sure that we don't miss problems. Next, we'll make sure the voltmeter is working correctly and verify the applied voltage with our voltmeter. With power applied to adjacent brush posts, we'll measure the output AC voltage across A1 and A2, and we'll record the results. If the interpole polarities are correct relative to that of the armature, the output voltage between leads A1 and A2 should be about half to two thirds of the voltage applied to adjacent brush posts. We're using 20 volts AC, so we should expect an output voltage between 10 and about 14 volts. Our reading is 11 volts. That means that the transformer buck effect is correct and that the interpole polarities are the correct polarity relative to 
that of the armature flux. If instead the transformer effect were to boost the output voltage across leads A1 and A2, for example, to 24 volts AC, that would mean the polarities of the interpoles relative to the armature are the same, which would be incorrect. The motor would arc and spark heavily as it's loaded. Rather than opposing the armature flux, the interpole flux would increase it, further distorting the field flux as in the right-hand figure. In that case, we would simply exchange the leads at the brush holders to reverse the armature polarity relative to the polarity of the interpoles. Then we repeat the test to confirm that the AC voltage between A1 and A2 is now half to two-thirds of a applied AC voltage, in this case about 10 to 14 volts. If the AC voltage between leads A1 and A2 is equal to the AC voltage applied to adjacent brush posts, one or more interpoles might be connected for the wrong polarity. Carefully check each connection and use DC to verify the polarity of the interpoles. An incorrect sequence of interpole polarities might also cause the output and applied voltages to be the same. For example, there might be three north polarity interpoles and one south polarity. Once again, verify the interpole polarities alternate north, south, north, south. If the voltage between leads A1 and A2 is significantly lower than expected, for example, a fourth of our applied voltage, the interpoles are probably misconnected with too few circuits. For example, where we should have a series parallel connection and instead all four interpoles are connected in series. This could occur if the interpole connection should have two circuits but only has one or if it should have four circuits and we only have two. As is usually the case, we have an exception to the rule. Another cause for significantly lower output voltage occurs when a DC machine has compensating windings, sometimes we call those pole face bars. In that case, the procedure to verify our interpole armature polarity is to shift the brush holder assembly about an inch or 25 millimeters off neutral and apply just enough DC voltage to leads A1 and A2 to make the armature rotate. The armature should follow the brush holders. In other words, if we shift the brush holders clockwise, the armature will rotate clockwise. If the voltage between the A1 and A2 leads is double what we expect, for example, once again, 24 volts, and exchanging the brush holder leads does not reduce it to 10 to 14 volts, the interpoles might be connected for too many circuits. While they aren't directly part of the interpole polarity test, here are a couple of bonus tips for improving DC machine reliability with equalizing jumpers. First, the brush posts of the same polarity should all be connected with equalizing jumpers to optimize brush wear and brush life while reducing the need for brush neutral adjustments. Brush post polarities for a four pole DC machine are positive, negative, positive, negative. This machine is a six pole machine so the polarity sequence is positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on for however many poles we have. Here's the second tip and the reason for it. When interpoles have two or more parallel circuits, connect the brush posts of the same polarity with equalizing jumpers. For example, a common four pole DC machine with four series parallel interpole circuits, that will assure the same measured voltage when we do our brush neutral test between post one and two as between post one and four. If we don't do that, we may be a little off on our brush neutral position, particularly if the brush facing around the commutator is not perfect. The interpole polarity test is an easy way to detect brush lead connection errors that could cause severe brush sparking or even a drastic flashover when the motor is under load. Thanks for watching. Join us again soon for more electric motor repair tips. <laughs>